This is race week. So excited. I love race week. All right, Sal, what are we doing today? Where are we at? What's going on? Today marks race week. So I'm kicking off the week with getting a DEXA scan. I did this at the beginning of my training. So now I'm gonna go back and check in and see how my body is uh, really handled the rigorous training. So we're gonna take a look at muscle mass, bone mass density, body fat, my weight, um, lean tissue percentage, all of that good stuff. So I love this test. This is essentially uh, one of the pieces that keeps me healthy and strong and making sure that um, I'm taking good care of myself and I'm, I'm holding up well. So um, yeah, excited to go find out those numbers and I'm excited to eat afterward. You can't eat right before these. So, um, and this is the week of big food. So bigger than ever, we're gonna be doing a lot of carb loading and um, eating big calories, but it's here. Race week is here. Let's go. Eyes can be open or closed, doesn't matter. Regular breathing. I wanted to see how my body was going to change and respond to this rigorous endurance training. I'm just gonna say straight up, I'm very happy with the results. A little, like six and a half days out from, from race day, uh, our stats now are 17.5% body fat, 147.3 pounds, uh, 116 pounds of lean tissue. So just to know that I gained three pounds of muscle during this whole buildup, it, I'm so stoked. And one of the reasons is, you know, since I stepped into this sport, um, you know, my idea of training, I know has always been unconventional. I have been lifting since I was a teenager, so it's, it's something that is very important to me. Um, and I really believe, as soon as I start in this sport, that in order to endure in these races, and for years and years on end, I, I think that we need strong, enduring bodies. And so that's always the foundation of my training, both in off season and in season. So to be able to get high mileage in, do these really big volume efforts and still build muscle, dude, I'm, I'm stoked. Summer and her partner told me that I need to get this. I guess there's a lot of water on the course this year, tons of snow, and so I'll be able to use this uh, this water filtration system. It's a nice bottle that I can just fill up. I have the straw, but I need a bottle. <laughs> Knowing that I'm gonna be out there for multiple days, gonna need a variety of food, so. Mango drizzled with chocolate, yes. This little tiny square packs in so many calories, 400 calories. For years, I used to eat these right before 100 mile races. Like I'd wake up a few hours, I'd keep it on my nightstand, I'd set my alarm for 3 a.m. and I would eat this and then fall back asleep for an hour <laughs> as a way to like double load up the calories. So um, these will be good for multiple days out there. Obviously I have, you know, sports nutrition, but I know I'm probably gonna get sick of that after a couple days and so 
Um, having a variety of different things that I can eat is key. But I love it when I can get a small square that has tons of calories, so. Those are good. All right, so it's race week, taper week. What uh, does this week look like for you? This week is all about eating lots of really good food and getting as much sleep as possible. So um, long hours at night, got some naps worked in as well. And then really just prepping um, the mind. You know, I, I'm a big believer in uh, giving a mental break and just really focusing on envisioning the race and, and different things that I want to do out there. Um, but we're going to spend this whole week prepping gear. Um, a couple weeks ago, I, I started my, my Coca Dona 250 list. So we're going to start filling up boxes. Um, my categories are one, running gear, so shoes, socks, sports bras and underwear, hot gear, cold gear. Then I have trail gear, so like my, uh, like my vest and water bottles and headlamps and whistles, emergency blankets, all the required gear. Then I have a category called first aid, recovery and sleep. And so that's everything to uh, take care of my body, um, rejuvenate it, and um, make sure that if I have, I, I run into any low points, which yes, I will, <laughs> that I ha I've, I've covered all my bases. My next category is food, nutrition, hydration, and kitchen tools. And so since Eddie, you're gonna be out there for several days, um, it's kind of twofold. Like I wanna make sure that Eddie's eating well and he has everything he needs. And um, it's not just me nutrition bars for him. So we got like, you know, he's able to make coffee and noodles and you know, whatever he wants to eat out there. And then I have a crew gear and camping category. And so um, I had a lot of fun going on Amazon and finding some car camping gear. I even found these super cool um, blackout curtains. They're just on magnets and they hang on the inside of your car. So we got a sunshade for the front and then cure, um, blackout curtains to go all around the SUV so that Eddie can literally crawl into the back of the car and go to sleep. So it's so important. It's probably one of my biggest worries is whether or not Eddie is going to sleep. Um, because I need you, Eddie, right? You need to sleep. <laughs> I will. You know, I'm just gonna make sure to go through all of my gear, be very thoughtful about every situation that happens out in, in the mountains and in hot weather. I think my experience from UTMB to Western States to Badwater to racing internationally in places like um, New Zealand and Australia and South Africa, um, you know, I've been able to take what I've learned from those races and and know what, you know, my my key pieces of of gear that I need. So, um we did do an episode on this. It was a very basic overview of some of the key pieces. So, all of that stuff will be in there, but as far as like crew goes and just knowing that um I'm out there for multiple days, I my list is probably the longest that I have ever had. But yeah, that's uh, it's packing week. So, what are we talking about? <laughs> what are you making? Oh, I'm making sweet potatoes over here. Oh. But this week, strategy for um, race week fuel is high calories, high carb. The most important thing is that I get to that start line feeling rested, fueled, ready to go. There is going to be a massive breakdown of my body during this 250 mile journey. So at the forefront of my mind is how can I um, get through this journey feeling as strong as possible. So I am banking uh, lots of calories. Now, tonight's dinner is gonna be sweet potatoes, asparagus, we got salmon, um, we got that yummy rustic bread. Um, earlier today, lunch was a 
um, a big strawberry protein shake. I had a giant cheeseburger from the burger lounge, um, a salad, and then um, just eaten. Oh, for, for breakfast this morning, we had a nice big breakfast burrito, and then kind of feeling just on little things throughout the day, fruit, um, cheese, anything to sneak in the extra calories. So um, the rest of the week is gonna follow the same suit. So each day we're just eating big meals, big calories, and a, uh, a focus effort on carbs. Do you want to sing this song to you? Yeah, please. Can you hear that in the background? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I can hit that note. Right. <laughs> Here's that part. And I will always love you. How awesome was that? How awesome was that, babe? You never need a microphone. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. It was great. But... <laughs> you love me. I do. So since it is race week, I thought it'd be really fun to share with you the stats about this race that I've been building up to. So it's 250.1 miles. Although I heard there was a reroute that added a mile, which is going to feel like forever, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's 251 miles, uh, but maybe that'll change. And then the cutoff time is 125 hours. So we basically have a little over five days to finish the race. The surface distribution, so what kind of surface we're running on, um, single track for 43% of it, that's amazing. Almost half of this course is on single track, which is my absolute favorite. Double track, so that could be just, you know, a much wider trail all the way up to like a Jeep trail. Um, that's 47% and then pavement for 10% because we drop into cities, so, which is super cool. The minimum elevation the entire time is at 3,000 feet and then we will um, peak out at 9,135 feet. And the estimated cumulative gain is 39,410 feet. And then the estimated cumulative loss is 34,286 feet. So definitely more climbing than descending in this race. Um, the other thing that is uh, a big key factor in this year's course is that in the first 37 miles, there's 10,000 feet of climbing. So it's a pretty uh, brutal way to start, especially because we're starting in, in Black Canyon City, which is right outside of a um, of Phoenix. And if you are familiar with the weather right now in Phoenix, um, and for like much of the year, it's pretty hot there. So race day forecast so far is 99 Fahrenheit, and that's gonna be nice and toasty way to be climbing in a fully exposed uh, section right from the get-go. So I personally, I love the heat. Um, you know, that's what's kept me going back to bad water year after year. I really like the heat. And I'm not saying it's easy to run in, but um, you know, it definitely drains you. It takes a lot out of you. You gotta really take care of yourself. And so um, I will be in this sun hat for a good portion of the race because um, keeping the sun off your face, shoulders and neck, that's key. And then I, um, I always suggest getting a very light flowy, um, this is a, a dry fit, light flowy long sleeve. It's, it's nice and cool, but I like to get it a couple sizes bigger so that if there is that desert wind, which is so nice and having that kind of flow around your body, that, that helps cool you down too. So these two pieces are uh, what I will probably be in the most out there on the course. And then um, let's see, you can see all of these clothes and everything behind me for the night sections, for when I get wet or sweaty, um, you know, I might be changing, I don't know. I don't know, Ed, I might just be like stinky in one outfit for three days straight. I dare you. Or four days or five days. I don't even know how many days it's gonna take me. <laughs> you dare me? Three I'm gonna days. hug you so hard <laughs> every time I come in and make you smell me. That's fine. <laughs> oh, we got there, some grub. <laughs> Little avocado toast with tomatoes, having um, just an afternoon afternoon snack right now. Nice. Yep, taking a break from all the packing and usually seven days before a race, I just do whatever feels good. So I don't have structured workouts and that's something that I started doing um, 
you know, it's probably like three or four years into racing. You know, I would, I would put pressure on myself, um, you know, right before the race, right after the race, always trying to get, you know, training in. But I feel like one of the, the most important things that I can do is one, trust my training. Um, but two, know that like, there's not a lot of gains that I'm gonna make in the seven days before I get to the start line. It's not like I'm gonna do something this week that's suddenly gonna make me a better, um, you know, a better athlete. But I do know that I am more likely to take away from my race by doing too much, by not getting enough rest or not getting enough food, um, by overexerting myself or worrying too much. So- I think your dog wants some of it. Well, I can't believe we are coming we're almost to the end of this series training for a 200 mile race and I want to tell you um, the viewers that you can follow the race there is a live feed and I'll give you the link a live feed with a live chat for the whole week of the race it's really awesome they have um, cameras and drones going the whole time so when you get a chance uh, tune in and you can also track us. Everyone is wearing a spot tracker and so you'll be able to see everyone's dot along the course and see us moving along and, and where we are. Um, the other thing, Eddie is going to be updating my Yellow Runner Instagram account. So if you don't follow that yet, um, follow that. And that will have more, um, more personalized, up-to-date information, both before the race, during the race, after the race. But we are most excited about having Drew Darby, who has been helping us with this YouTube series. Um, it's, it's just been incredible. That's why it's amazing, because of Drew. And then Tyler McCain, um, amazing photographer. So both of these boys did the Choose Strong project with us, and they are gonna be out on the course documenting my race. So there is a race film coming, and it'll probably come anywhere between like three and four weeks after the race. But um, yeah, we'll be excited to share the whole journey with you and um, up close and personal about what happened and um, really just how the, the race played out. and and just share lots of fun and exciting stories too, I'm sure are gonna come out of it. But yeah, so thank you for following along and hopefully I'll see you either on the live feed or on our Yellow Runner Instagram. It's go time. It's go time. Let's go, let's go. <laughs>